Welcome to Witchy Business, hosted by me, Emily. And me, Anna. This is your weekly dose of friendly business chat with a witchy flair. Through these personal and vulnerable conversations, we share our business journey with you. Highlighting the links to our overall growth journey in the hopes to make you feel more supported as you share your magic. This episode is sponsored by Plan Her, a timeless and undated planner and journal created to help witches stay organized while in flow. We especially love the pages for new moon manifestations and full moon reflections. For additional support on how to harness the energy of the moon while working on your business, subscribe to our Substack. Your link in our show notes. Hello and welcome to another episode of Witchy Business. Today we are going to be talking all about good girl syndrome and then sharing how that's played out in our lives and all things good girl syndrome basically. (laughs) We have just recorded our full moon notes episode, which is coming, it will come out a day before this episode does, and we are feeling the full moon energy big time. So if you haven't already listened to that episode, go and listen to it, and it might explain some things and also give you some tips on how you can work with this energy within your work and business. Mm. So good girl syndrome. Yeah, I feel like it's a good follow up from the episode we put out last week about boundaries. Yeah. Go us for actually putting two in a row that linked to each other. (laughs) Yeah, Um, because this is also something we said this last week with the boundaries, but this has been a topic that we've been wanting to talk about for a while. And we've kind of just let it flow when it's when it's wanted to come through and it seems to be the week that it's that it's coming through so why don't we start by explaining what good girl syndrome is Mm -hmm. yeah so good girl syndrome is really an expectation from society of how women should be and how they should act and it's often something that has come from childhood when as young girls girls have been told to be good they should be things like they should be seen and not heard they shouldn't speak up and they are praised for being good doing good things being nice being you know not not expressing themselves fully and what that then leads to as adults as women leads to beliefs like you can't say no to things you have to please others you have to put others before you you have high standards for yourself so that might be that you have felt this pressure to be perfect and perfectionism is something that you struggle with it's being afraid of upsetting others again tied into people pleasing Mm -hmm. and also believing that you have to be nice to be loved you can't speak out And maybe you have some fears or you feel guilty for speaking out and speaking what's on your mind. So that's really an explanation, a brief explanation. Is there anything, did I miss anything? No, I feel like, yeah, that, you know, covers it all. And to me, it's interesting, like how many different things it touches on because often like the good girl syndrome if we think of it of like having to be nice and stuff I don't relate that much to that in particular but the having very high expectation for ourselves and that need to like be perfect whatever I've decided perfect is I definitely relate to that and so it's interesting to see like how many different in how many different ways it actually affects um people and women in particular yeah yeah I feel like I relate to to all of it and I can definitely see stages in my life where I've Mm. played into more you know more of those traits than Mm. others and it is something that I am aware of and that I feel like I have been working on particularly perfectionism and having those high standards I have been working on that for years and it is still something that I check myself for, you know, even now. And the idea of people pleasing, struggling to say no, I I definitely struggled with that in my younger years. I 
feel finally at a place where I can say no without feeling guilty if something isn't in alignment with Mm me but being afraid of upsetting others is also still something I struggle with and I I think in terms of business and work the idea of showing up more you know on social media online or if you are in a a work setting and you're someone who has to go to meetings or present Mm -hmm. in front of a lot of people that can be quite confronting because you're you're sharing there's like the fear of being judged there's the fear of saying something that might offend someone and all of that 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 comes up Mm. from speaking what's on your mind and expressing yourself right yeah yeah and like when I think about it with work and like my old work and stuff I feel like I didn't have that but I was affected like I didn't show up in the um, I want to please people but i showed up in the I don't care I'll fight for this so there's still a link with it I'm struggling to put words to it but it's like I'm going to exceed the expectations that are set on me Mm -hmm. and I'll do that with like a very yeah warrior kind of fighting pushing energy to me um and in a way that links back to that way I don't disappoint anyone Mm -hmm. and yeah so it's just yeah Uh, Mm. that's really interesting hearing that because I feel like I was the opposite particularly in my last the last full-time job that I was in before Mm. I started my business I felt so low in confidence that I went the opposite way I didn't want to stand out I didn't want to put my hand up I didn't want to suggest new ideas or you know say what was on my mind because it was that fear of I still had those high standards for myself but it was almost like a secret high standard you know and it was like almost the opposite of that if I don't speak up then I can't fail I can't Mm. you know I don't put myself out there so I can't get hurt or I can't offend someone and so that that actually is the opposite of what you're saying it's like the two sides yeah that's it it's the two sides of wanting to blend not blend in but like meet expectations and be who you are expected to be and in both cases you're not fully being yourself because there's times where you are overly confident and times when we're not and it yeah it's it's really interesting and it's so is insidious the right name the right word you know like it's it's like an undercurrent and we don't even realize when it's there like recently I think it was two weeks ago my coach pulled me up on it she's like yeah but are you doing this really for you or just to be good to the other person and it took me a while to realize that it was more to be good and to be nice and to be kind but in being so kind to the other person I wasn't being kind or true to myself and it was really interesting for me to notice because I really hadn't seen it to me I was just being like responsible for my actions and how they affect someone else um then she was like yeah but how about you in in all of this and I think like part of that good girl syndrome is really putting everybody else before you Um, because that is something that society expects especially from women yeah 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 it's I often see good girl syndrome being talked about in the context of relationships Mm -hmm. whether that's a romantic well actually it's usually within the context of a romantic relationship but I'm kind of interested in how it plays out in work relationships Mm. or business relationships or personal relationships and then like you said the relationship to yourself Mm. because this is this is like all of the beliefs that are there are surrounding the idea of you're putting someone else before you right yeah 
but then how does that affect you and then how does that affect all of the relationships it's like a cycle yeah. isn't it yeah because it, if you're not able to be yourself if you're constantly putting other people first and this this might be a conscious or a subconscious belief like I also wasn't really aware of these beliefs and how they were yeah. how they were actually part of this good girl syndrome but then how does that actually impact other relationships because if you're not truly being yourself and you're not actually giving yourself what you need and what you want then that's going to play out mm. in so many other ways yeah it's another one of those things of like how how do you stop it in a way and mm. And I actually feel like the, you know, I was talking about boundaries last week and now about this. It is about having really healthy boundaries, firstly, with yourself so you can notice when you are doing something from a good girl point of view um, and then being able to express those boundaries and set them and maintain them with others. And that's going to rattle a few, a few people because that's not who they are used to. That's not who they, why is it so hard to say (laughs) this new person that you're going to be setting boundaries is not who they're used to being in relationship to. Mm. That wasn't that hard. Um, Yeah. So, but then I find like when you set those boundaries, to respect yourself more so not coming from a good girl perspective but just coming from a a you perspective you've got to like when and we spoke about this last week like when your boundaries are really clean and clear with yourself then there's a bigger chance that they'll be respected by the other yeah and then if they're not respected it's usually because that person wins a lot more Um, by you not having those so yeah it's like who's winning from you putting everybody else first yeah and what do we say boundaries are an act of self-love yeah just love that if you haven't listened to last week's episode on on setting boundaries definitely go and listen to that and let us know what you think Mm. yeah and I think I just want to go on a tangent go for it (laughs) Ran. um women are constantly in the media and the press penalized for being powerful for being successful and all of this really ties into that good girl syndrome because Mm -hmm. the more women the more young girls see these women of power these women who have success in the media with horrible titles in in do you follow Jamila Jamila Jamil yeah. on I used to and I don't anymore because what she shows just annoys me like gets me really angry yeah and it's good to see like it's important but yeah yeah and she always posts these these news articles and these stories about how women are always just being torn down for for being in the position that they're in and that is just contributing to good girl syndrome it's like women can't have it all women can't have the successful career make all the money because then the men won't feel man enough and they won't feel you know and then you won't be loved and then you and it's like all of this and it's so frustrating and we need to be celebrating we need to be empowering Mm -hmm. more women to be living the life that they want to live but unfortunately the society we live in doesn't set that up for women like how are women supposed to you know the workplace the nine to the nine to five the <laughs> the big we... inverted commas nine to <laughs> yeah. five you mean the how... seven thirty to eight <laughs> yeah how are we meant to be working all of those hours whilst having a family raising kids whilst also having our cycles because our energy just isn't the same and so yeah big changes need to be made (laughs) but also awareness having awareness of that I think 
is really important because if you are able to read those headlines and see these things in the news and understand that that is just the media that is just yeah. someone's projection someone telling a story for the sake of telling a story it's not truth it is safe to be successful it is safe to make lots of money more money than your partner more money than your friends who are men and it is safe for you to have a life that you want to live and and say no when you don't want to do something mm. that is safe for you so having that self-awareness around that that you are the only one that gets to tell your story yeah is really key yeah and it's it's really like I feel like it opens up so many conversation of you know um with men and it depends like who but also with women you know like because I feel like women are very good at bringing other women down They're, yeah you know better yeah. than men in a lot of cases um of like saying what makes you uncomfortable in in me doing this why does me putting myself first make you uncomfortable you know like reflecting it back on them of like yeah but I'm I'm just not behaving like a like a good little girl why does that make you uncomfortable what do you gain from me behaving in this certain way of showing them like yeah well maybe there's something for you to check about yourself with this and it's mm. yeah 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 it's a it's an interesting one like I'm pretty lucky in the sense that my dad raised me to always you know use my voice and we always had like deep conversations and you know strong women were always part of my life like my dad was a stay-at-home dad and it was my stepmom who worked and had the big career because that's what was really important for her and and my mom's always worked and looked after my sister and I and you know so but then I remember one when I was a teenager telling my dad like you want me to be a strong woman and to have strong opinions until those opinions are against yours and then you don't you know you don't want me to express those and yeah it was a bit of a oh okay <laughs> yeah like um and it, it's and it's like I said like I think with work I was in the other extreme of just like, I'm not going to be a good girl, but I was fighting against it. And if you're fighting against something, you're still in relationship with that thing. So with mm -hmm. that syndrome. So in a way you're still perpetuating it. Yeah. It's only when you're able to really not be in relationship to that, that you're no longer, that you're breaking the cycle. So it's not, fighting against it so much that helps it's just witnessing it and seeing when it's present and when it creeps up and when it's starting to take space in your life and um yeah, yeah. But it's not an easy one because it's so sprinkled around you know in in every parts of our lives and and I do want to say, like, when we have the, and we mentioned this last week as well, like, we're having this conversation from a point of view of women, because that's the only point of view that we can share. But good girl syndrome doesn't serve men either. Because I feel like, especially like men in our generation, they're raised in this middle, you know, I think like good girl syndrome might have served like the boomers, because then the men had all the power and they could do what they want and women were just nice and pretty and yeah women weren't allowed bank accounts until yeah what, the 70s or something Wild. yeah and so yeah. but for men in our generation it's like well if they want to be aware that women should be shouldn't necessarily be abiding by this like good girl syndrome mm. but they're also not showing what a woman who isn't in that is it's just, you know it's just like what's their place in that and that's you know only from a point of view of like a heterosexual man but like mm -hmm. yeah I just want to touch on this that it's not just like women are mistreated in society or which they are but it doesn't serve anyone mm -hmm. 
this kind of um, way of behaving doesn't help anyone in society. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps a, a better name for it is it's not good girl syndrome. It's just being good in yeah. general. It's being two nice. shoes syndrome. Yeah. 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 And it yeah, just that's a really good point. Comes yeah. Up in a different way. And yeah. Mm, yeah. But it is at, at its core, mm. it's it's really linked to the the fear of rejection the fear of abandonment yeah fear of disappointing others yeah and those are real core core wounds yeah to, yeah they're know. very difficult to just take a stand against because as social beings like we want to be accepted and not rejected so yeah 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 it's a big so thing. to start rounding off what can you do if you recognize that you have let's call it giddy two shoes syndrome the first thing is setting healthy boundaries which we won't go too much into because we've done a whole episode there's a whole hour on that (laughs) yeah um I would actually say like before setting the boundaries that the first thing is well you know when you notice it who does it serve Mm. and noticing that like in my case recently like when my coach like pulled me up on it and just it doesn't serve anyone and I feel like that's really helpful and if it does serve someone for you to be a goody two-shoes is there a different way because it's not about hurting the other or or being selfish and not caring about the other person. It's, yeah, is, is there a different way of communicating something or of doing something that can still serve them, but also serves you? Or I should say serves you before it serves them. Yeah. And to add to that, if someone that you are in a relationship with and whatever form of relationship that is prefers you to be nice it prefers you to be good and doesn't like you to be expressing yourself fully and and showing up as you are then Big that needs flag. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes um yeah and That's so then you need to set a very strong boundary yeah and that needs to be looked at and and also know that if someone is reacting badly to you to you or setting boundaries or saying no or saying what you think or feel if someone is reacting badly to that then that's a reflection on them that's them projecting on you and and to really look at that as well Mm -hmm. yeah definitely and I mean, just like everything, it's a journey. Like this good girl syndrome is there since I don't even want to say, you know, it, it's been there for thousands of years and generations and generations. You're not going to heal it overnight in yourself. Um, and so it's just something to take time with and to have like open, honest conversations about, I find. Um, yeah and just being gentle with ourselves um with it yeah 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 I'm really curious like I would love to hear from people like how how goody two shoes syndrome um shows up in their life and how also noticing like how it served you you know being able to say oh but I'm always the nice one so you're you can have this like victim role in life so Mm -hmm. being honest like it you know does it serve you what does it allow you to have um how it served others where the balance was lost where it didn't serve you anymore um and then yeah what you're doing about it Um, yeah I'd be really interested to know Mm. Mm. yeah Yeah. send us a dm yeah um 
yeah i feel like that's it for today that was like a a quick short one um and yeah we'll see you next week for something else that comes to mind and if you've got an idea if there's something you'd like us to speak to like please yeah let us know we'll do our best cool thank you thank you for tuning in to your weekly dose of witchy business if you love us as much as we love us please leave a five-star review to help us spread the magic thank you again to our sponsor plan her Please support them the way they support us. And don't forget to follow the link in the show notes to sign up to our Substack. You can also watch us on YouTube. It's at Witchy Business. And you can also follow us on Instagram at We Are Witchy Business. Emily is at underscore Emily Tyson. And I am at Anna.Jordan with an E.